Okay, this is video lecture number 45. Today we are looking at Abraham Lincoln and the Republican triumph. Only two sections today. Uh, the first is covering Lincoln's political career, and then the second will explore the Union under siege. So, by 1858, the Republican Party effectively uh, becomes the major vehicle of opposition uh, to the still dominant Democrats, uh, supplanting the Whigs and the short-lived anti-immigrant American Party, also called the Know-Nothing Party. Uh, the Republicans, though, were an exclusively northern party. Uh, indeed, by building its appeal around opposition to the slave power, uh, the Republican Party was as much anti-Southern as it was anti-slavery. The Democrats, on the other hand, spanned the two sections. While Southerners dominated its councils and uh, the administration of President James Buchanan, uh, the party retained considerable Northern support. Its foremost figure was uh, Senator Stephen Douglas of Illinois, uh, the champion of popular sovereignty in Kansas and Nebraska. In 1858, though, Douglas was challenged for re-election by a prominent Republican lawyer named Abraham Lincoln. Uh, though born poor and largely self-educated, Lincoln was a brilliant debater, uh, and in his celebrated joint appearances with Douglas, demonstrated that popular sovereignty was unworkable. While he won re-election, Douglas's efforts to straddle the sections only excited suspicion of him in both North and South. Southerners were further inflamed uh, the following year when a notorious anti-slavery bushwhacker from Bleeding Kansas named John Brown, hoping to foment a slave revolt, launched a private invasion of Virginia. Brown's character and even his sanity soon became matters of dispute. Uh, however, the action he took was almost universally celebrated among abolitionists. Southern disaffection with Douglas and Douglas's increasing resistance to Southern demands led to a split in the Democratic Party in 1860. In the meantime, the Republican Party built a strong coalition tying its crusade against the slave power to a number of positive programs that it argued would benefit ordinary white Northerners. Behind Lincoln, their standard bearer, uh, the Republicans received less than 40% of the vote in the 1860 elections. But with the Democrats in disarray and with strong Republican majorities in the populous free states, uh, they gained a majority of electoral votes. For the first time in the history of the Republic, a presidential election had been won solely with the votes of one section of the nation, uh, by a party whose core principle was hostility to the other section. The final conflict was now at hand. So let's take a closer look now at Abraham Lincoln and this Republican triumph by first exploring Lincoln's political career. Abraham Lincoln came from an impoverished yeoman farming fam family in Illinois. Uh, in 1831, he rejected the farmer's life and became a store clerk. Now, Lincoln was an ambitious man. Uh, he was admitted to the bar in 1837, uh, married the more socially prominent Mary Todd in 1842, uh, and served four terms as a Whig in the Illinois Assembly. In 1846, Lincoln won election to Congress where he had to take a stand on the issue of slavery. Uh, he felt that slavery was unjust, but did not believe that the federal government had the constitutional authority to tamper with it. Lincoln argued that prohibiting the expansion of slavery, uh, gradual emancipation, and the colonization of freed slaves were the only practical ways to address the issue. Both abolitionists and pro-slavery activists derided Lincoln's pragmatic policies. Uh, he lost his bid for re-election, and for a while, he withdrew from politics in order to devote his time to practicing law. Lincoln returned to politics after the passage of Stephen Douglas's Kansas-Nebraska Act. Uh, he attacked the doctrine at, uh, of popular sovereignty and said he would leave slavery where it existed, but not extend it into the territories. Lincoln abandoned the Whig Party and joined the Republicans. 
and he soon emerged as their leader in Illinois. In Lincoln's House Divided speech, uh, he predicted a constitutional crisis over slavery. In the 1858 duel for the U.S. Senate, uh, Stephen Douglas declared his support for white supremacy, and Lincoln, put on the defensive by Douglas, advocated economic opportunity for blacks, but not equal political rights. Douglas's Freeport Doctrine uh, asserted that settlers could exclude slavery by not adopting local legislation to protect it. Uh, this upset pro-slavery advocates and abolitionists as well. Douglas was elected to the Senate, but Lincoln had established a national reputation. Okay, our next section then is the Union under siege. Southern Democrats divided into two groups. The moderates, or Southern rights Democrats, pursued protection of slavery in the territories, uh, and the radicals actively promoted secession from the Union. In October of 1859, John Brown led a raid that temporarily seized the federal arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Virginia. His purpose was to supply arms for a slave rebellion uh, and establish a separate African-American state in the South. Brown was charged with treason, sentenced to death, and hanged. Uh, he was a martyr to abolitionists, and this horrified Southerners. <clears throat> in 1860, Northern Democrats rejected Jefferson Davis's program to protect slavery in the territories. So the delegates from eight Southern states quit the meeting and nominated as their candidate John C. Breckinridge of Kentucky. Northern and Western delegates nominated Stephen Douglas. The Republicans chose Abraham Lincoln as their candidate uh, for his moderate position on slavery, his appealing egalitarian image, and his important Midwestern political base. The fourth candidate was John Bell, a former Tennessee Whig, uh, who was the nominee of the compromise-seeking Constitutional Union Party. Again, Lincoln received only 40% of the popular vote, but he won a majority in the Electoral College by carrying every northern and western state except New Jersey. Douglas won electoral votes only in Missouri uh, and New Jersey. Breckinridge captured every state in the Deep South, as well as Delaware, Maryland, and North Carolina. Uh, John Bell carried the upper southern states. The Republicans had united the Northeast, the Midwest, and the Far West behind free soil uh, and had seized national power. To many Southerners, it seemed that their constitutional order of slavery was now under siege. This does conclude today's video lecture then. At this time, please answer the review questions at the bottom of the screen and continue on with your work.